All right. It's- hey, Casties. Welcome to Casterville into the cow barn. No. Oh, good morning, Betsy. We are excited. We have Felix Cavalier on the show today. Felix. And Bob and Susan, you're looking good today. Oh, man. I hope someday our audience can share our visuals, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got the whole world behind our yeah, backs. Yeah, we have worldly backdrops. How y'all doing? How's it been since I saw you last? Oh, it's been great. Going through a lot of stuff. Still good. Working. I'm painting the house. I'm working the podcast. House. Hey, you know what? I, I thought of a factoid about our podcast. And it, I laughed about it because well, this is our guest today, Rascals. Now, this is going to be our third guest that is actually in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And we've had the Medley and Richie Fury. We didn't like mention it. It's like, usually you think you'd say, Hey, tell us what it was like going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But we yeah. never get to questions like that, it seems. So Richie Fury was in the Buffalo in Springfield, you know? Oh, they got inducted. Okay. <clears throat> so look, like the Ed Sullivan question, maybe I need to be Hall of Fame question girl. Yeah. Susan, you do have your role. Thank you very much. But look, we're here now. Yeah. Hey God, is that a new earring? It is a new earring. OMG, Casties, he's got a new earring. Hold on. I'm going to look. Luann got it right. for me for my anniversary. Please come closer. And it's real. It's oh, a you guys, it's beautiful. And it's a real diamond. <laughs> I, I was saying, is this kind of, did we just tape a promo uh, for a uh, visual podcast? <clears throat> We're going to have jewelry sponsors when we have our syndicated visual. <laughs> There's one way you'll see this. Okay, guys? That's either if you go to Miami. Okay, December 11th. You'll see it. Okay, clearly. Uh, but other than that, oh, his earring, you mean one way you can see Paul's earring is come to Miami. Oh, surely <laughs> the close up. I will attest that the close up of that thing was absolutely stunning. It really <laughs> is. It's it's an eye catcher. I'm just going to say it right off the bat. But hi, you guys. Silver hair yeah. behind. Anyway, I that rock and roll Hall of Fame thing. You got a haircut? No, I need one. And I need a little root work. You guys see that at the top? Yeah, I see it. Hey, we got a good show today. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Um, I personally um, can't wait to talk to our guest because I thought he and his band were so flipping cute. And I'm going to try uh-huh. not to bring that up because it's 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 sketchy no, as a 62-year-old woman. I'm going to give you the guide version of just what you said, okay? Say it. This Tell kind me. of guest to me is like, and he's not going to know it. Cool. He's being visited with and interviewed by fans <laughs> oh that's why we're so giddy like schoolgirls. that's why it's like what do i ask him if he says oh i've been asked that a thousand times i'm gonna crumble in front of his oh, screen you i think know? you're right because the last time i felt this think? way was bill medley and i had a okay. crush on him omg you've hit it thanks bob now i'll know how to handle my flutters <laughs> okay so are we do we have any questions yeah we need you to be the girl who always asks hey did you even know about us because i we can't i know it's i'll ask all the embarrassing questions for us and i'm the youngest and in these people's minds trust me they still think of me as eight and he won't you know i mean at least i like to think so but y'all guys are there any questions from our cast so we've been trying to get to this and it's really a good one maybe i don't want them thinking of me as eight well keep going it was uh from a uh, a, a, a caster, right? I got to get that. Casti. No, it's a casti. Sorry, casti. I want to get that straight. Uh, right. About Susan and her little solo attempts uh, to break away from the family when she was young and did TV shows uh, and dances uh, with uh, Buddy Epson and uh, Dean Martin. Mm-hmm. And she's sitting with Johnny Cash. And the question really is uh, of those guys, who was the sweetest? Who was the nicest? And they want to know the Susan Council experience. And you know what? Me and Paul do too, huh, Paul? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking it's going to be Marty Allen, but we'll let her say. <laughs> <laughs> well, he runs a close 25th. Now, now that, that is Shirley Jones, Partridge Mom's husband. No, that uh, was Marty Ingalls. <laughs> who did you say? Marty Allen, the kind of um i know the doughy eyed guy kind yeah, of doughy sticky man from the 60s very funny gent though i'm told okay you guys okay all right so all right well here goes so the question is dancing and if you could see my brothers now with their heads in little sleeping mode you've got and they're sleeping we're serious we're serious hey susan go for it susan one thing and then i want you to talk everybody loves <laughs> sometimes go everybody falls in love somehow 
We were supposed to talk about this last week, and yeah. because I am me and they have to really focus to pay attention to see I'm even in a room, we we totally forgot. And now they're struggling with it as a plan. So let's just kind of work with these two. All right, guys, here okay. we go. My favorite person to dance with is different than my favorite person to have done the canoodling young girl, older man, 60s, <laughs> incredible scenario. So I'm going to start with Buddy Epson because as my favorite dance partner, because A really was almost the only one. And, but more importantly than anything, when I was a little girl, I watched Shirley Temple movies, not because it was a kind of a sick fascination with it. I didn't think she was really cute. I didn't want to be it. It just, she freaked me out. And I just like, she was a little lady in a body anyway, but she always danced with Jed Clampett. Cause I would see those movies on a Saturday and then I'd watch Beverly Hillbillies and I'm like, holy cow, <laughs> Shirley is dancing with Jed Clampett, Buddy Ebsen. Okay. Uh, yeah. So then we get our special, they tell me Buddy Ebsen is our host, Jed Clampett, we all go nuts. And then mm -hmm. I go, oh my God, the Shirley Temple dancer guy. And lo and behold, they tell me I'm doing a soft shoe with Buddy, which is what she did. I was a terrible dancer. I was all legs and about two inches of waist, and I had long arms and long legs and no body at the time. So every move I made was like a pendulum swinging, <laughs> like way further than it needed to go. But my favorite co-star guy was hands down Dean Martin. Oh, and that's hard because Johnny Cash was so wonderful. And I just want to say one thing. When I was a kid, I had to sit on a lot of laps, and I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> And the dealio is, is my favorite lap dance of my youth was Johnny Cash. And here's why. So when we were doing the Johnny Cash show, y'all, in rehearsal, I don't know if you remember this, he had on that blue jumper suit that looked like you work at a gas station, yep, number one. Yeah, yep. So now he's as big as Lincoln. And that's all that's coming in my head is Abe Lincoln, Abe Lincoln. And so one point they say, <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> pick up the little girl and put her on your lap. Let's see how that looks in rehearsal. So Johnny he looks at me and he takes me with his Paul Bunyan hands. He goes, are you ready? And I go, yep. And he lifts me up, puts me up on his knee. And I swear to God, it was stone. He was, he was so strong and hard. He felt like stone. Yeah. And it felt like I was sitting on the Lincoln Monument. So that yeah. was a little weird. But Dean was... That's Dean. too much of an image. You're sitting on the Lincoln Monument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys remember that time when we were kids and we went out there and we were trying to climb up it? Susan, yeah. I remember the Johnny Cash thing. And yeah. so I'm like, okay, you know, I'm 10 years older, right? So I'm looking at you going on the lap and I'm going like, this is Johnny Cash. Like, what am I? You know, chop liver over here. Uh -huh. liver. Not that I'm going to get grabbed for the lap. I know that. Can I tell you happen. the only thing that would have ended up on his lap sooner than me would have been a puppy dog. He did shake my hand at the end of the performance that made up with that. Go ahead. He Susan, invited honey. you to hang out with him. Okay. So, but, and Johnny oh. was super cool, right guys? Johnny was awesome, but that wasn't really my thing. I mean, I sat, they had me canoodling next to him and had me, uh, they always say stuff like this, put your hand on his knee. Do this, do that. They tell you stuff like that, we, what I had to do, guys. So when I'm doing the Dean Martin thing, we're not dancing, but we have a skit and I have to do it. And I've mapped it out, um, but you only rehearse with Dean and then you, then you record with Dean, two moments. So during the rehearsal, and then the lady stands behind Dean and does everything I'm supposed to do. And I'm facing Dean's over shoulder and I'm watching her, okay, to do all the things with my hands. That's how the rehearsal goes. <clears throat> the whole time I'm doing it and I'm watching her and singing and he can feel me and he's got his hands around my waist. She's saying, now put your hands around her waist. He goes, the whole time in my ear, he goes, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. If you're more comfortable just putting your hands on my shoulders, just do that. You don't have to hold the back of my head. It's sticky. My granddaughter doesn't like my sticky hair when she wants to hit, sit on Papa's lap. I have a granddaughter your age. He's telling me all this while we're getting settled and I am calming down and feeling, I'm like, you have a granddaughter my age? And she doesn't like, and he was so good. And he goes, now I'm gonna put my hands here. Is this comfortable for you? Do you, you know, I want you to be comfy. We're gonna sing and have a nice time. So Dean was beyond what I ever dreamed. I've never had that wow. experience. You really it wanted, I have a question. Did he ever, ever 
um, initiate any kind of conversation with you about like ask about, hey, you know, tell me about your brothers, Bob and Paul, because I know I know you're in this bigger band. Did that ever come up? Yes, it did, Bob. <clears throat> when I told him his hands were fine on my waist, he then said, and one last thing. Oh, no, that's Dean. Oh, yeah. Dean said Bob should have gone with Johnny to the porch jam. Oh, how funny. That's what no, he but said All kidding me. aside, Paul Wright, we were blown away with the Buddy Epson. OK, we were blown away with Buddy Epson being right. on our TV special. Come on, it was Jed huge. Clampett. It was Jed Clampett. Because this is current Jed Clampett. And guys, we are fans. In fact, we'll see how fan fanboy and girl we become with Felix. I hope we conduct a professional interview. We're all... <laughs> but anyway, so that's the end. Oh, that's example it. of what's it... coming right there. If yeah. we have... Our technology, guys, where we sing, we start singing the, the uh, come and listen to my story about it. You know, I'm just, we can. Man named Jed, poor mountaineer, nearly kept a family fed. And unfortunately, that's And then not... one day he was. Hey, let's try it one more time. Come on. Let's see if, if the technology, we're just waiting on the technology, you guys, to be able to sing together. And so, and we don't know if we've got it or not. Um, Who counts off? Yeah. Okay. So and and come and listen to a story. Okay. 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 One, two, three. Come, come and listen, listen to a story, story about a man named Jed, poor, poor mountaineer, near, barely kept, kept the sound of bed. Then what? <laughs> nope. Nope. I can tell. I can well, tell. I mean, that sounded like chaos, but sometimes even during the show on stage, we sound like chaos sometimes, right? But <laughs> that, that is true. Back. That is true. That bro. You would have to so anyway, back. may I may I conclude? Yes. That is the end of me answering the questions. Thank you very much. Stuart from Winnipeg. And that's not really true, but I just wanted to name a name and a place. <laughs> yeah, it's a great answer. Okay, well, that, they, you know, I've had, what, Paul? Oh, I was just wondering, do we have um, listeners in Canada? I don't know, Bob. Do we have listeners in Canada, Bob? Yes, we do have listeners. Canada is number three on the list of countries. Okay. No way. Okay. No, number two. Sorry, number two. Yeah. And all yeah. the Australians out there, yeah. everybody in yeah. Australia, we love you. We want to come see you. Canada, we love you. We want to come see you. Hey, and our nephew Dell lives in Canada. So we'll say hello to Dell in Canada. Yes. And all hey, of a Del. sudden, I feel like I'm talking like him. It'd but be like um, a family so, visit, but you know. You guys, hey, oh, let's update the gigs. Update the gigs. Uh, but one more thing since Paul brought it up, we don't want to diss anybody. No. The three listeners in the Ukraine, just build your database, build the crowd, build the fan base in there. You've got a good start. There's three of you because we know you're downloading. We want to come to Ukraine and play. We want to do, we'll play for everybody. Music, we're going to unify. Are there people. trees okay. in the Ukraine? I don't. Wait, can we move along? Yes, we have listeners in 23 countries, kids. Can yeah, they, awesome. Okay. Awesome. 23 countries. I, I need trees. Um, so what else? Oh, oh, hey, I know. Um, I, have an, I have something I wanted to spring on you guys, and we won't do it now. And I uh -oh. just want to throw this out to the Casties and think if you that guys... sounds like we're doing it now. Go. Amazing. I, no, no, it's just a suggestion for a new segment on, on our podcast. And I think it would be like fun food with Sue's or something like that. Like maybe I have a little recipe moment. Yeah, just a little recipe moment. Real super quick. Paul, Paul made Paul. a face. He made a well, face. Well, the reason I made a face is because... I thought we were going to do cooking segments. I mean, I literally thought one day Susan we was going to We can't even cook. get the freaking eyeball up and you want to have an oven and a stove? I'm just tweedled down to a couple of recipes I could spin. I don't want to degrade it to just reading recipes. I want to see you cooking. Well, have you seen my one cooking show? Did you see that one I did? It was hilarious. I did it. Yeah, it was okay. a wonderful audition for a solo career. Thank I you, Bob. It. And we get it, Paul, right? But <laughs> yeah. you know, I just thought it would be nice for the ladies. I just Susan, this is right in line with you get to do the Dean Martin show and you get to do the buddy. And but now you want the cooking show. You know, it's never ready. No, Paul's puffer fish before I asked for a special segment. And John got us. Paul and John got special segments before I even asked for one. It's not in your personality to ask for a special segment. Oh, Bob. you mean because I do the fun? You're a puffer fish. John's, you know, where's John? 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 And I'm just me. Who every once in a while we remember somebody asked me a question. Susan Cowsell. No, that's a bad analogy, and here's why: because me and Paul can interact with with John and other people. If you get the cooking segment. All we get to do is watch. No, you get to taste it virtually. <laughs> I mean a quickie. Hey, girls, I just found this in the Lucadla. Apple cider with whipped cream. Try it tomorrow. Bye. Then my segment's over. You know what? I agree. Is Paul Pufferfish here? Well done, Susan. And yes, he is. <laughs> okay, Thank so you. ladies and gentlemen. Apple cider and whipped cream. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, yes, his own segment. Uh, here he is. He's puffed up with knowledge, and he always is. Paul Pufferfish, what do you got for us, Paul? Well... 
Awesome, Susan. Well, thank you for that intro, guys. I just wanted to bring this to the attention of my sister, Susan, because, and Bob too, but she's really into this kind of stuff. Did you guys know that we can become an eternal reef? What? So, you know, you know, remember our, our, our idea of putting us at the bottom of trees? Yes. Well, what they're doing now is they're taking cremation and they're putting it in this like little ball of cement and putting the ball of cement in the ocean and then a reef. Nice. Building. It does. Oh, I like that one a lot. It does. Wow. It we does. could be down, but we could be on Indian Avenue and we could build yeah. a reef. Yes, oh, see? that's so oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, wow. yeah. half of them are there anyway. There's already a reef being yeah. built. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. It's like I you agree. think you're going along and say, okay, a tree. I love the tree. And then you hear this, you go, well, now wait a minute. Do I no, want to be a okay. reef? But Bob, yeah. that's like real estate, mountains or ocean. Mountains are, can uh, I have both? Forest I mean, or that's ocean. Right. You can split you up. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I divide Susan, when you pass, me and Bob will split you up. <laughs> And then we'll take half of you and put it in cement. We'll take the other half and put it in the tree. And me and Bob will wait till the reef is built wait. and the tree is grown. Oh, this is hilarious. Um, just one question. If that no. happens to me and you do that to me, will you please make sure that one eye is going to the reef just in case. And the other yeah. eye goes to the tree. Okay. Because I don't know what happens after I'm dead. Right. So you're not donating together. your eyes, What do I, I know? All right. You're not yeah. donating eyes then. If I have to worry about split, separating eyes with like my spoons. Look at what? there's going to be very little of me left because I'm donating everything to, you know, science. So So we're talking left toe, right toe. Probably. Reef. Okay. Oh, you're Look, everywhere. So, you're sh- everywhere. Polly, I love the reef. Is this puffer okay. fish? Okay, yeah, that was good fish. next. Here's a, n- a neat one. So back in the day, I'm going to say like way back before vacuums where the electric vacuum came about. Oh wow. That vacuums were horse drawn now listen oh, yeah. to this you guys <laughs> the horse the horse were on a were pulling a big truck that had this big sucking thing on it and they would take a gigantic hose they put it through the window of these people's houses and they would vacuum their house and then the horse would move on down the road whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. pull up with a horse and carriage and a big hose put the hose yeah. in the window Yep. Generate some kind of motion. Suction. What would Suction. somehow? How? Yeah. How? You know, oh, by the, the there's a machine. The horses are drawing a, a flatbed buggy with a machine in it. Okay, that's yeah. cranking something that's sucking yeah. out. So it's like it would okay. be like a generator. Okay. Back there, and it's sucking. I can go with that. My first reaction to that, if I lived back then would be hardwood floors in a broom because I know this has to do with rugs. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't really have to do it. I say they're they're vacuuming rugs and materials that are coming in from uh, the new, the old world into the new world. And that is insane. What do but you think? I live with hardwood floors. What and an image. I Dust could... bunnies are there. Yeah. yeah. Was this a yeah. service to the rich or anyone could get a horse drawn vacuum? It seemed kind of like it was just like the newspaper boy coming. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that seems like a, a, a okay. upper, cl- upper class kind of thing, but it, but cool. Oh. Good to know. Well, I can <laughs> see no. sitting in some chairs and everyone's hacking. You know, we better get oh my that God, Felix Cavallari is coming here, you guys. Ten here, minutes. listen to this, though, right okay. now. Okay, okay, I'm listening. Yeah. Children. Yes. Of identical twins. So you have two sisters that are identical twins, okay. and they get married, and then they have kids. So their kids and our cousins, we would think they're not, they're siblings. Stop, siblings. please stop, stop. I have okay. to think. See it. Two sisters, identical uh, no, twins, identical twin sisters. Yep. They each have a kid. Yep. And that makes those two sisters and siblings. Why? I don't care. Wait, Susan, I'm working, through that, I'm working through that genetic box where you put this up there and that there and you see how that works. I'm not yeah. seeing a genetic box for this. All right, Polly, fill us in. So they Just, have they have to. Is that legal? Even I don't know. Well, I don't know. They're not certainly cousins or siblings. They're not going to get married. Wild. So that would be the only problem. I just think it's a scientific thing because but they're I identical. But I still don't understand it. Well, if they're identical, even though they're getting married to two different people, they're still one. Susan, you know, this is complicated because when he said it, I went like, what? <laughs> I had to read it again. And it's real deep. I, I think I'm going to leave it to the scholars, but it's super interesting. It is. Hey, you know what? And let's admit, 
folks out there, you want to fact check us, go for yes, it. Yes, go for uh, it. Uh, because then we get to, uh, Right. This is all the real yeah. deal. Yeah. Here's oh, a yeah. funny one. In okay. fact, let's have a whole new line of questioning for back. Okay. Here's a yeah, lighter. Buffer this, oh, okay. You can have that segment, Susan. <laughs> hey, um, it was Bob's idea. I don't That'll be your me. segment after me. <laughs> I want to be in your segments. Go. Hey, listen to this one, you guys. Classic. This is a crack up. You're more likely to get a computer virus from a religious site more than a porn site. <laughs> and, and I know why. I want to know. Uh, oh my God. I really am interested in, in the statistics of the study. I want to know who sat there and, and did that and how many times. <laughs> how, how here's, the, here's the answer to your. Is it nine out of 10 or what? <laughs> no, it's that. It's hey, that. We're not, we're not, before he, Paul says what he's going to say, we are not promoting this investigation. <laughs> no, none yet. of it. Go, Paul. Okay. Go. Well, all I'm saying is that the reason is, is because the porn sites, they need to make money. So they're not going to put a ton of viruses in there to keep everybody's credit cards out. And that's a good point. But the... that's it. And religion is free. So. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I mean, fiscal, fiscal, well, fiscal, or fiscal. <laughs> the religion yeah, oh, isn't free. The religion is is uh, they're farming something else that leads to uh, <gasps> Paul Pufferfish. You right. never Dr. cease right. to amaze. Good explanation. Well, I, I buy tell you in. What, I'm into that. Did you know that bumblebees can fly higher than Mount Everest? <laughs> How does Mount Everest fly? It doesn't. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> no, I know. Paul's throwing his notes, guys. He's throwing notes. No, so bumblebees can fly higher than Mount Everest because they must get in a wind or must carry them up there or something. Or somehow they get birthed up at the top and then when they get birthed, they fly out. How about that? I would imagine how windy is it above Mount Somebody Everest? Somebody could bring them on up there in a cute little thing. It's the only way it could happen up there. They go up, the wind, whatever. When they get there, though, they're encapsulated by ice, I guess. I mean, come on, it's yeah. freezing below. And they, Maybe that's they fly over in the ice machine that created around them, and they go into this, like, anima suspended animation in the ice. By the time they get over Everest to the green section, this is going to melt. And they're going to re, you know, ignite into life, and that's how. that's the only way they could get over no one's happily going over Mount Everest if you're a bumblebee. But Bob, Paul you got to get up there. He said the what I would jet like, stream, maybe, I don't know. Ice? Well, look at, I know that there's a Castie out there. Who knows? That knows the reason why. <laughs> I thought it was going to say who's camp. He'll be a scientist Everest. or something like that. What, and Bob? <laughs> no, I thought you're, I know there's a Castie out there who's camped on Mount Everest right now. <laughs> oh, uh, no. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then I, I have one more. Okay. Not our age. And the one more is this. Of course, in ancient times, oh and you'll get this, spider webs were used as bandages. Bandages, mm -hmm. sure. I can see that. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I've been caught up in a few. Yes, and you, you feel have, like you're I believe that. bandage. You ever try and dislodge one of those suckers under your chairs out yeah. in the back? You ever turn that upside down? Like, oh, you yeah. think so? Yeah. And you start pounding away at them, and they do think so? No, nope, I've never. Yeah, spider webs are tough to bust. It's true. Paul, thank you, Paul Pufferfish. It was nice having you. I like your bell, Susan. Thanks, man. Guys, I see Felix's I name. I see Felix's name. You know, we're nervous, you guys, because we are huge fans of yeah. this gentleman. Yeah, we're we're trying to be professional. We're a little worried about getting a little excited. So, God, pray for us. Hey, Casties, it was funny. Last night, we were talking about how nervous we were that Felix was coming on. And, you know, I mean, the day before, we had Mark Dawson on, and it was just like old home week. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, we've known Felix forever. He played Bambies for crying. I know. You I know. know. What if I click on his name, something will happen. Hey, hey, Felix. How are you? Hi, Felix. Felix, we're great. Thank you so much for being here. You did Yay. it. You did it, Felix. Wow. We we were just we were just talking about the fact that um you're gonna be visited with three fans here. That's us. And yes. uh it's going to guide us through this. We're going to try and be as professional as we can. And our sister Susan is bursting to ask you questions oh. <laughs> and, uh, for doing this. Everybody, this is Felix uh, Cavalier of the Rascals, of course. Susan, what do you got? Hi, Felix, and welcome. How are you doing? I'm well, doing it's great to see you all. I'll tell you, it's been 
How long? I don't even remember. My goodness. Oh. I think the last was um, at the half shell. Uh, maybe. Wow. But that we'll talk about that later because. Yeah. But I yeah. the first time um, was in Rhode Island. We'll talk about that later. Sure. What are we talking about now? Um, I love to kind of start out um, with our guests because we all know, and we're going to talk a lot about your musical career and everything that's cool about you. But I know because I grew up in a family band. Like I know the thought of something else wasn't really, I had ideas of other things to do, but it was clear I was going to make some music with these guys. Yeah. So, but, but not every kid who's in a band starts out that way. So I always like to know what did you want to be when you grow up? What did your folks think would be a good idea? Or were you, did you come out with a B, a Hammond in your heart? And that was it. <laughs> it is <crazy. laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know, um, you know, I just ran into your bro there with the Beach Boys. Juano oh, Capistrano. Now, who may be the nicest human being I've ever met in my life. He's a sweetheart. Yes. So I always wanted uh, brothers and sisters like that. So you guys are so lucky. I don't know if you know them. Oh, yeah. We do. We do. We do. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, BGs, I mean, you know, you guys, I, I was with the Gatlin brothers. I don't know if you know those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we do. Totally, totally insane. They're totally insane. Did you did you have music and look around in the neighborhood, grow up with guys who who no. also, or were you like heading for something else? And then yeah, I, I know something. you did classical. You know, I know yeah. your mom made sure you were you were well-rounded. And then I even think you're supposed to be Dr. Cavallari. <clears throat> yeah, well, you know, I mean, seriously, uh, that it just kind of happened. Copy that. Uh, um, you know, my mother wanted, saw some musical talent, and so she really wanted me to become a classical pianist. I mean, she awesome. en enrolled me in this school that uh, literally I, I had three classes a week for eight years. Wow. You were and, that uh, guy. You know, I mean, I, I really, I really rebelled because I, I, I you know, I, I wanted to go out and you know play with my friends, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, my family was was all uh, in the medical field. There was no one really in the musical field. And uh, what happened basically is uh, that I guess God had a different idea because right. lo and behold, I went into the music business. And there's a story behind it. But of course, there's a story behind everybody's involved. But I had no idea uh, in the beginning. I had no idea okay. at all. Okay. Well, we'd love to hear that story. How did you go well, from okay. classical I, I, piano guy to the guy yeah. at Bambi's? <laughs> well, basically, uh, you know, uh, I, I I got involved uh, uh, in high school with a, with a band that was playing like, uh, you know, more sophisticated type of music because there was it was like more like, uh, you know, playing for bar mitzvahs and uh, okay. weddings and prom. So I started playing like, you know, popular, you know, standards, so to speak. God, yeah. And then, yeah. you know, uh, see, I, I wrote a book and all this is in the book. So I'm going to read my book to you as I'm speaking. That's okay. fine. I went to I went to junior high and the first day of school, they separated us by uh, alphabetical. And the yeah. fellow in front of me who was to become one of my dearest friend was C.A.L. And I'm C.A.V. Okay. <laughs> okay. And he turned around and um, he said, hey, you like rock and roll? And I said, sure. I never, I didn't have any idea what he was talking about. You're uh, kidding so me. I had to be cool because I've been- What year? What, what year are you at right now? 1910, around 1910, 11. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Okay. In the New Deal. Okay, you you discover rock and roll with C A V C A L. Keep going. This is good. I can't yeah, so, believe. So I, I I had no idea, but I wanted to. You know, I didn't want to be like oh, I don't know what the hell you talk. So I went home, and I turned on the radio. <laughs> and the good luck that I had is that I I grew up near New York City, where this gentleman by the name of Alan Freed had this radio station. W-I-N-S, and he had this stuff called rock and roll. Right on. Well, what can I say? I mean, the next thing I know, I mean, oh, my God. That <laughs> did it. And I, I started to hear people play the instrument that I was trained on. Yeah. Like Fats Domino, mm -hmm. Jerry Lewis, and then, of course, Ray Charles. And I said to myself, 
Right. I gotta learn this stuff. <laughs> right, right. That oh, that is. That's, so I said, well, you know, from a musical point of view, I, 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 I could do it. I don't know. It's the feeling that got me. Right. You know, the feeling, you know, because obviously the, the, you know, the, 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 the grooves. And that's that's basically what started me, you know. But I mean, Felix, the, right. do you know how amazing it is to, for me, you guys? And I, I'm gobsmacked at that story because <laughs> when I'm watching you play with your band as a young man, I do not feel that that man is not a thousand times connected to that rock, oh, yeah. that machine, that moment. You're so all in, and it feels so it's so authentic. So that's pretty cool. What you know, we find it one way or the other, and and thanks for sharing that. You know, that I awesome. mean, seriously, you know, I, I we all we have kids now, grandkids, you know, oh, and yeah. uh, you know, uh, I tell them the same thing. You know, you can you can start off with an idea of what you want to be, but it may not work out like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just that's... be open to the universe and to like you know what's what could happen to you because that's what happened to me, you know. And um, I mean, to continue the story. Uh, Started a band uh, in in college, and I went to Syracuse where Lou Reed went. You know, so there was a lot of music up in that in that school, and uh, some of the guys in the band had connections to the Catskill Mountains. So, at the end of my sophomore year, they said, "Well, look, why don't we go to the mountains and play for a summer?" And uh, so I said, yeah, let's go. So I went to this place called the Raleigh Hotel. Now, I don't know if you, you all ever worked at Catskills. Are you, you guys old we enough did. to do that or what? Yep. Oh, we did. Yeah. <laughs> you did? We were old enough we to did do whatever. Catskills. We did shows up there, yes. Remember it then. It was fun, right? Oh, yes. yeah. We loved oh, it. It was like camping. Horseback riding. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, and, and I was there for a whole summer. Wow. Basically, what we did is the band that I had, it was called Felix and the Escorts. Hello. And, uh, you know, we played for like the guests when they came into the hotel. Yes. We played for the uh, for the fashion shows. We played for the kids, you know, uh, when they had their whatever, you know. But at that time it was around where this thing called the twist was around. So we started <laughs> yeah. playing that in the in the uh, in, in the lounge. And I just I loved it. I mean, I was I was making sixty dollars a week and all I could eat. I was just <laughs> I could not believe it. And you know, they would bring all these these acts in every weekend that were like the headliners. Well, one of the weekends was this group from New Jersey called Joey D and the Stallers. Now, this is when my life took a complete one eighty. Okay, first of all, the craziest craziest bunch of Guys, you know, New Jersey has a special connotation with. <laughs> we know a lot of Jersey guys. You know, they, they kind of uh, abandoned it years ago, you know. Well, anyway, so they, they saw me and, and, and the story is really cute. But, you know, like uh, about two months later, or when the semester was the summer was ending and semester was starting, I got a call from them in Europe. Uh, their manager said, we need an organ player. Our organ player had just recently gotten married. He's lonely. We need you to come to Germany. Okay, so I get on an airplane, go to Germany, and, and wow. this is a whole, yeah, and and this is a whole other you know story, magical mission. Of course, nobody met me at the airport, and you know, <laughs> oh yeah, no. baby. That's when I knew this is. Are you sure you want to do this now? You and know, how old are you? Twenties? Are you twenties yet? I, I don't even know if I was twenty. I was. I was, I was you okay. Know, College, 19, something Copy like that. Copy that. You're still in that. I go to this foreign country. And yeah, nobody... that's what I'm thinking. But then we work in this club, we work in this place in Frankfurt, and there's a group opening up for Joey called The Beatles. <laughs> the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on. Yes. So I walk in and I hear everybody screaming, hollering, you know, like, Oh my God! What is this? You know, yeah. this is the Beatles. Now it's about a year before they came to the U.S., so <laughs> we didn't know. And I and I saw these guys with long hair, and I really had never seen guys with long hair quite like this. Okay, <laughs> I saw all, all these beautiful young frauleins. Yeah, I said, you know what? This could be a lot of fun. I think I might want to do this. <laughs> you know, you know? And that's the. Felix seals the deal in England, man. He's a performer. I, I mean, like I say, so, you know, I, I, I listened to their music. I, I listened to the music, what I could hear above the, 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 the tumult. 
And, you know, I've said this before, but when they played American music, you know, they didn't quite have it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, they have yeah. a kind yeah, of it sounded a little forced. <laughs> it's not like, you know, the 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 the, the, the intelligent way to say it, the syncopation wasn't there. Okay. Right. However, the, the other way we say it is like, don't bring that around my neighborhood. You know, don't what I'm got no groove. Right? <laughs> when they did their songs, yeah, your hair stood up. That's right. Oh. Like, Whoa. That's right. And I'm serious. It was like, what the heck is that? You know what I mean? It was like, you know, they did that. Down, 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 down. And it's a little off the beat. You know, the one is like a little it's bit kooky. late. You know. It was like, wow, man. You know, was, 17's got a whole little. Oh, you want, I, I, did I, I know I, the well, entire yeah. world was going to feel that exact emotion of yeah. like, Crazy. oh my God, this is so well, cool. And Felix, Felix also, you know, I, 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 I heard somebody say this, heck, it could have been you, but coming from classical music where you couldn't change Mozart, <laughs> you couldn't oh, change well, Beethoven. Yeah. Yeah. So you went from that yeah. And that, now you're in Europe, you're seeing this rock and roll and they're playing the same ivory that you touch, yeah. but they're coming out with this other kind of thing. That must have been crazy exciting for you. Well, it, you know, it was really like, I, I can do this, you know, mm -hmm. why, not, why not do this? People like what I do. You know, they they I had such a blast in college, you know, playing for the for the athletes and the the you know, the, the, the homecomings and all. I, I had a blast. You know, <laughs> oh, I'm in school. I have to remember. Oh, yeah, I better get. Back. <laughs> oh, can I ask you real quick? Were your were your folks happy about you heading into rock and roll? Well, that's another story. But, you know, my, my you know, my father was like my father. I mean, people would come backstage. They say to my dad, do you know how much soul your son has? And my father, who was a dentist, said, <laughs> The only soul that I know is uh, at the bottom of I my shoe. shoe. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take your word for it. He had no idea. So what happened was so cool because, you know, uh, he gave me permission. Let me just make a long story. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. He said, wow, you, 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 give it a try. Take a Good. year. We like that. See That's if you can make it in the music business. I said, yeah, sure, a year. But, you know, youth. We can do anything in a oh, year, of right? Of course, of course. One, I, I have just one more follow-up question. Were you able later in life to share that story of that night with the Beatles with them at any time in about your distant future? Were you going to be able to share something like that with them? Yeah, well, uh, sure. Well, I, I toured with Ringo. I did his All Star. Yeah, yeah you wanted that. Yeah, yeah, we wanted and, uh, there. How was it? I mean, yeah. oh, I was so cool. He's such a lovely, lovely guy, man. He's just. He's a big ham, man. I'm telling you something. Yeah, you cannot, yeah. you got to take a hook to get him off stage. <laughs> oh, no. God bless Ringo. We know that so well as <sighs> colleagues and co people like that. Of course, we love that guy. I mean, it don't come easy. I mean, he sealed the deal then for me. But but back to the tour. So you did what, a, about four or five rascal songs, like sort of like we do the Happy Together tour. It's a combination of oh, yeah. these groups, that kind of thing, right? And you all yeah. use the same band. Were you well, in the no, with, band? with Ringo, what he does, he calls it the Ringo, the Ringo Star All Star Band. Right. Yes. And he has, the, let's, it was um, Randy Bachman. Uh, it was oh, wow. uh, Preston, Rest His Soul. John Entwistle, who's also gone. Yeah, uh, who else did he have? Mark Farner. Oh. And uh, so what we do, and of course, Ring and his son on the drums. Great. And uh, yeah. basically what you do is you do each other's songs. So in other words, you oh. go around like in a circle and you do like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Captain uh, Captain with Mark Farner. You do. Oh, that's a bl You're each other's singers. idea. Randy, you know, Billy Pre Preston's songs. You do like. Wow. Feel like you go around nothing, and then first, nothing leaves song, nothing you know yeah, yeah and then you got him doing like yellow submarine you know i mean and it goes around in a circle like that so it's like oh, you're a beetle for a minute ah oh, it's so fun man it's just oh, it has to be you know he's the nicest human being you, you know, guys uh, did can you travel on buses during that tour like a three bus uh, well, we, we, we went overseas but we went to uh japan and 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 and, and it was great because we got on the, that bullet train and all that kind of stuff oh, wow. and uh when we got to the states you know like uh, he, he's pretty cool way he travels he, he'll either fly you or you'll you'll get on a, a private jet here or so something, something something's always good happening with ringo awesome. did he call you uh, yeah. up were you sitting at home kicking it 
and and your phone rang and it was like, honey, it's Ringo. Like, did no, that happen? No, no, no. It was, it was, it was, it was a promoter. Oh, no, okay. I was just curious. I was like, wow, yeah, so that would David blow my Fish mind. Off, David Fishoff is the guy who does the rock and roll fantasy camp. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And, uh, but anyway, uh, it, it was fun. But I, I got to know all, all of the of Beatles, uh, especially uh, George. I, I knew George the best. Wow, you did? And we had similar kind of views, you know, as wow, far as. Oh, uh, that's you know, Cool. So you and shook he, he hands and you charm me. You're with him. You shook his hand. You touched George Harrison, right? Yeah. You are now the closest I've ever been to George Harrison. You are it. Huh. Yeah, I tell you, what a lo- lovely guy. You know, I just you know, what a great guy. You know, and, and I said to him one day, you know, I, I said to him, I said George, I said, do you do you realize when you guys move your hand this far to the left that the entire globe tilts <laughs> <laughs> our globes <laughs> yeah. no that's as good as do you realize you're george harrison that's as you're hilarious yes. okay, you're okay. Felix. can said, i yes. ask my goofy questions of mr cavallari mr cavallari may i yes of course <laughs> thank you well they're just my kind of curiosity and since i'm you have to understand i'm asking you as me now and then i'm asking you as me then because that's how I see you. So I have two Felixes. Um, gotcha. <laughs> and the Felix I'm asking right now is, so I am seeing you on Ed Sullivan as a little girl. And you guys, your first thing, you have, you know, these um, costumes on outfits. And you're called the Young Rascals, right? And I am a big fan of a television program called The Little Rascals. I got you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So am I tripping or is there a connection? No connection. You mean the fact that you guys were what you were wearing and that Spanky wore that kind of thing in his show and the fact <laughs> that you were called Young Rascals a zip Zola to do with each other? No. You know, it, it's 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 just <clears throat> strange how coincidences happen. Okay, but, tell uh, me. Well, basically, uh, you know, we were searching around for a name. You know, we kept trying different names. And... Uh, uh, you don't mind if I tell long stories. No, though. we love it. It's why we have you here. So there was this gentleman in New York City called Soupy Sales. You guys know Soupy oh, Sales? Oh, yeah. I was friends with Tony. Oh, yeah, of course. It's right, fun. yeah. In New York. Well, I adored him. We, we adored him. Yeah. So Soupy had a hit record. It's called The Mouse, right? Yep. So we got an idea. Let's go down to WNEW Television. <laughs> Hit on Soupy to be his band. <laughs> to be his band. Oh. Okay. So we did. So we walk in and immediately he starts with, okay, everybody, grab your wallets. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> and we start laughing, you know. And and so we we tell him soup, you know, like you guys, you got a big hit record. You're gonna have to take a band on the road. And you know, we're a band and we we love you and we, you know, we want to go out. And he said, Okay, hold on. What is your name? And we had stupid names we kept trying to find names and either they were taken he says he's i know what i want to call you but no we couldn't print that he says <laughs> <laughs> so i think he gave us the name the rascal okay. oh. so anyway so he said to us he said you know i notice every time i say something you guys laugh this could come in very handy on stage for <laughs> 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 soupy yeah we did about four shows five shows with him and he was right. Oh. Sometimes the audience, you know, he was a little bit too, too under their intelligent level. Yes. <laughs> well, yes. Listen, that kids show he had that I watched all the time. I was oh, like, too, am I supposed to be watching this? I think this is a kid show. So anyway, yeah. what happened is now we, 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 we become the rascals. Okay. And we just we just did our first record, uh, which was I ain't going to eat up my heart anymore. I'm skipping of a lot of things. That's but anyway, okay. yeah. and we get a phone call as our second record comes out, which is called Good Loving. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. Our manager says, you know, lads, we had a little trouble with the name. I said, why? Well, there's this group on Milton Berle's show called the Harmonica Rascals. Oh. <laughs> so I him said Bernstein change your name to the young rascals and I said oi 
Which is Italian for you're kidding me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we use it all the time. Right. I says, are you are you are you kidding me? I said, you couldn't come up with anything but the velvet <laughs> rascals, you know, the, uh, you know, the, uh, come on, man. I mean, the first thing that's going to happen is these people going to start asking me, does that dog have a ring around his eye? Exactly. Uh, I'm so exactly. sorry. Yeah. But why did you wear those clothes on Sullivan? Oh, that happened before the, the name. Holy Toledo. You're not kidding. See, God is nuts. You can't make this up, Felix. Can't make it up. <laughs> See, I blame Dino for those outfits, and he he says okay. no, no, it wasn't oh, too Oh, he sure so, was cute. That's quick, okay. Yeah, so were you. Oh my God. Director. He was quick question. Quick, quick question. question. You mentioned Dino. Were the Rascals ever accused of having Mike Smith of the Day Clark Five as their drummer? <laughs> because <laughs> when we were no, kids, no. Smith he, and he Dino Dinelli of the Rascals, Paul McCartney. Yeah, he wanted brothers. Like, what what is with these two? Mike Smith and Dino? And we were totally fixated how much they look alike. Yeah. Is that so? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and people so. probably looking at us. Oh, um, we have lots of questions. How does a classical pianist and a jazz drummer, you know, form the rascal? You know, become the rascals. <laughs> yeah. Dino was oh, a jazz man. drummer. It's like those two come together and do. Oh, this. I hear all of that though, because it's so sophisticated like rock. It. Go ahead, Paul. So Felix. Felix. Uh, yeah, we man. just want to congratulate you on your induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, well, thank you. Did that, was that it. fun? Did that feel great? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it felt great, you know, obviously from the outside. But on the inside, the town, man, it's so sad. You guys are so lucky you're a family. Yeah. <laughs> you really are. Oh, yeah. Say why? Because it's sad. Because my heart, the way we get, the way we treat each other in our band, it's it's so Happy. sad. Okay. Oh, it's really, it's okay. like, oh, don't don't feel bad. But I, you know, like, you know, it, it's really shame. You, you know, you guys cannot go too far without being in love. You're a family. Sure. Right. Hundred so, percent. As we put it, we no one can quit. But our our since you brought up family, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. right? Since you brought up the family, because we were wondering, because we we were a band back then. We, we had a room with two sets of bunk beds. Four of us were in a room even at one point. And we always thought like bands like the Rascals, you're like, you start out, you're four brothers, you're Jersey, you're, you're tight, you're, you're, you're living in bunk together. beds. Didn't you start out like a family and, and you know? Well, we thought so, you know, uh, I mean, uh, you know, we, we really thought, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it just, I mean, I'm so proud of those guys because of the fact that, you know, like they're all really good. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, every, everybody in that band. I mean, like I, when I when I first met Dino Danelli, the drummer, uh, uh, a, a lady that I was seeing, it, 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 she said, well, you guys, you got a good drummer, but I got a better drummer. And I, and I said, what do you mean you're a teller in a bank? What the heck do you know? <laughs> <laughs> and she took me to see this guy at the Metropole. I saw him play one song and I said, are you, are you kidding me? I said, this wow. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, he was just like, because from the jazz world, he did a show while oh, he was playing. Man. Oh, flip okay. it, stick. Oh, sure. And, uh, twirling and. Oh, he was doing that. Yeah, he's the guy. That's pretty. And, uh, he, he, didn't, he didn't miss the beat. He was. He could do he it. Right yeah. there. It was I Who Have Nothing. You know that song? Oh, okay. yes. I, 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 who have I, I on the cymbal. <laughs> I Who Have Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, get uh, out of here. This guy's nice. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And, Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then, Bob, yep. then you get inducted into, you're the freshman class with the Hammond Hall of Fame. Yeah, that was so, cool too, yeah. But, so here you are, you're a classical piano player. <laughs> what, what gets you to go and look at this gigantic ship of a keyboard and go, man, I got to have that? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Same gentleman, C.A.L. Remember C.A.L.? Yes. 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 And in front of you. C.A.L. became one of my best friends. His name was John. John Colon. Cool. And uh, he says, man, you know, we're about 15. Yeah. I got this club up in New Rochelle. They call it the Shell, where I come from. New Rochelle. There's an organ trio in there. I said, a what? He says, yeah, man, we got to go check it out. I said, yeah, we got one problem. We can't get in. <laughs> you know, we're, oh, we're uh, underage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says, ah, we got that covered. Don't worry about it. Anyway, so I won't go into any kind of illegalities. We get in and I see this trio, the Mighty Cravers. There's a sax, a drum, and a friggin' orchestra sitting down at an organ. Yeah. This guy's singing. He's playing bass. He's playing leads. He's playing rhythm. And I said, 
that's what I want to play. <laughs> gotcha. Wow. Only one problem. It doesn't fold up. Three thousand dollars. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. So I, I got, oh, wow. I got on my, I got, I got on my best clothes, and I went down to Macy's down in New York City. Oh great! Oh, and I walked into the Hammond organ room. What Macy's? Yeah, that's where they had it. Okay. And, uh, this gentleman and, and I, I know this so well because you know, like I say, it is Mr. Silverstein was in charge of the apartment, and he saw this kid who had about a dollar and a half. You know, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, oh boy, I had it right in there, you know. And there's a door, it was all you know, like wood door. I opened it up, yeah. I didn't even know how to turn the thing on, right? Yeah. Right, <laughs> like a motorcycle. And I said, What is this, you know? So, anyway, that that started, you know. I said, Wow, man, I, I gotta learn, I gotta, I gotta learn this thing. So, it's, it's like something, you know, like you, know, you get these things put in your path. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, well, and, and if, was. if you're open, if you're open for business, yeah. it fills you, well, you know, let me ask you then, because we always wondered back then. OK, and now we got you. All right. So you got the rascals. OK, you got the ham and you got Eddie. He's out front with a tambourine. You got Gene. He's the guitar guy. And you got your drummer. We want to know. Because back in the day, you knew what you needed. You needed a bass player, okay? And you knew it. And I, we know there had to be <laughs> bass players floating around the Rascal universe at the time. But your feet are going to win this, okay? And we want to know, how do your feet beat out a fifth member of the Rascals? Couldn't find anybody at that time that you know fit the bill. You know, I mean, uh, wow. no one was yeah, better than your it. feet. That is incredible. Yeah, it, well, that's 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 how uh, uh, Joey D had the same thing. He had he, he had an organ player instead of a bass player uh, in the beginning, oh. you know, which is what I uh, I see. Said. I didn't know people did that back then. I thought that was just a now thing because I know a lot of keyboard players who play bass with hand and then they play the key with the other. Didn't know about early '60s pedals under the thingy. Blah, boom. Yeah, very very exciting. It's hard to find people uh, that um, you know uh, can play R and B that are white. <laughs> Especially with their feet and their hands at the same time. Well, it's, there are DNA that's a, that's strands. A nice way of saying we couldn't we couldn't really find anybody that you know. Yeah, and plus, DNA you know, for we all got along so well. You know, you you want to yeah. make sure you have simpatico there. You want absolutely. Like, Do you and you didn't yeah. have to cut the pie one more time. <laughs> well, then there's and the Frisco. This was a musical thing, and, and you know yeah. I, I had it covered, man. Don't worry about. It. I got this covered. Right, man. right. Do you cool. think? Do you think you know, classical training that really got you in charge of your, both your hands, uh, do you think that helped you in terms of, all right, now I'm going to go to the feet? Because you can have three things. It's all music. Here. You know, if you know music, you know music. That's, it's as simple as that. If, if, you, if, if you learn on, a, on, a, on an instrument such as a piano, yeah. you know, you learn the whole orchestra. I mean, you know, yes. you learn the bass, you learn the rhythm, you learn but. the the ability Amazing. to separate a bass part with a with a, with a, a a linear or something else to me is pure magic because I have played bass and sang before and it is oh, nothing go. that comes naturally at all can be done with great focus and cross eyes. It's like um, separation between church and state. You know, you got to have this hand doing this. Yeah, yeah. you must no, have all that. Know. Like yeah, a drummer. It's pretty. Well, drummer does the same thing. They they have yeah. to they have all their limbs. You know. Yeah. They have to. Have all their I, limbs. Absolutely, no, it's no. that same all mindset. Right. Why they're crazy. so crazy? Drummers are so crazy it's because of all that. You know. They, yeah, yeah. They gotta feel in one place. They're not in one place. They're all. Over. I'm married. <laughs> one. Please, let's move along. <laughs> and, and for you casters, it is special that Felix can do this with his feet and hands. I don't care what he it says. It is, y'all. <laughs> It I mean, is. Hey, you, um, somebody say Broadway because I want to know about that. Well, once upon a dream, right. Felix, once upon a dream, you guys got together. You're on Broadway. You're doing six shows a week. You get yeah. two weeks and then you take it on the road. You find it's a little expensive to do that. But how was yeah, that? Yeah, that sounds like Broadway? fun. Well, it was good and bad. You know, I mean, it was, it's an interesting, it, it was an interesting idea. And, uh, you know, we're in the same theater where like Oklahoma and My Fair Lady and all these things. That, that was yeah. that was a hoot, you know. Yeah, uh, it, I bet. Uh, the the positive parts of it are, are, of course, you know, that we got the band back together, you know, yeah. thanks to Steve Van Zandt, which was very difficult for him. I mean, there, there was no he he did yeoman's work. Wow. To do. Gotcha. And uh, it's unfortunate because uh, there was also negative things about it. You know, and, uh, you know, uh, 
it was hard for me because of the fact that, you know, I, I, I've been working by myself, you know, uh, for like long years, 30 years. Yes. Now all of a sudden I'm confined mm. and, 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 and the script was so strict that I couldn't, I, I really couldn't, uh, do my thing. You know what I mean? I, I really couldn't like uh, digress from the, the, the so-called way it was written. That that was difficult for me. Understood. And you yeah, know, can I, I even say, thought about can that. I say that the McCartney, th it's like you're the McCartney of the Rascals shows. You're a performer and McCartney going back to the Beatles. That's like you being asked to go back to the Rascals. It, it, it can't happen. It's too constrictive. I get that. It was very constrictive. And, and, and uh, you know, it, 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 um, uh, it was too big to go on the road, just as you said. It was really too big. For Broadway, it was great. Yeah. If we had cool stopped idea. Yeah, and kept on Broadway, it would have been perfect, though. But when, uh, we took it, tried to, when he tried to take it on the road, Van Zandt, I, I think basically, you know, it's tough, man. It, it's tough enough on the road to sell tickets. Well, can I say another question? Because this is tough to us. Me, Paul, and Susan do the Happy Together tour. So we do five songs a night and in that five songs we put the energy of an hour and a half show and that's what we learned about that you huh. guys took on 28 songs a night yeah. six nights a week and how did you take care of your voice yeah gotta know well, i'll tell you i i had a uh, i had some help with that you know because uh, uh i had the same question you know uh, how do you do <laughs> I that bet. and uh, so I, I went to this lady who was a vocal teacher and, uh, uh, okay. you know, and, and, and she, she, she said, there's absolutely no reason for you to be hoarse. There's no reason for you to strain your voice. Let me show you. Okay. And she showed me these tricks, which I'd be glad to share with you someday. It was, I got it. I, I, I mean, in other words, like, why are you straining yourself? <laughs> you know? and is that yeah. using your head voice and things of that nature and breathing better? Well, it had to do with starting off with breathing properly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of times when you do, when you're in the studio, you know, and you got a bad, a big part, you got to play in the background, you go, <gasps> you don't need that air. Yeah. You don't need it. You think you need it, but you right? don't show me these little things. She says, do this, you know, and do this warm up before you go on. And you'll never have a problem. Wow. I love it. I might hit you up for her name. And it, I, 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 I tell you, it really worked. And she showed me these tricks, which was so cool, man. You know, because I guess a lot of vocal teachers have these these techniques. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, never had the problem before. Happy Together is, a, you know, the consecutive, even though it's four or five songs, it's still every night and it's still 120 at the get go. And I'm 62 and I was feeling it. And uh, so My I freaking started leg is 62. <laughs> <laughs> well perspective is everything <laughs> so felix felix the broadway uh, show, how was the broadway show on uh dino and i asked because i saw it and and it looked like a lot of hard hard as drummers get work he uh he's not in really good shape right now you know what okay. i'm saying Aww. neither is gene gene is in not not good shape i don't know if we you know about we know it. gene well yeah. You know, his heart attack on stage. You heard about yeah, that. Yeah, man. Yes, absolutely. He comes to all our shows. He comes to Cutting Room. Yeah, he's he's a good man. He's he's not coming anymore. He can't move too well. But yeah. uh, we shout out to Gene, man. Cause yeah, Gene, we love you, we love you Gene. Gene. He's a good God, man. Yeah. You know? and, uh, I still have my Gene Cornish guitar pick, Gene. Hey, okay, thank you. Dino had a tough time in the beginning because he had not really stayed busy. Yeah. And yes. as you know, oh. the, the drummers have to stay busy. You, you gotta, you gotta use it or out. lose it, man. Yeah. And uh, but see, here, here's where the, the, the fantastic part of this is when we first yeah. started uh, with that tour, we were in a, in a, in a uh, theater in um, uh, I can't remember the city up up in New York State. There it was a you know we, we were we we're trying it out, you know. Oh, okay. But when we hit Broadway, we we had already been playing for like a week and a half, two weeks. When oh, we hit about yeah. the third or fourth week of that thing. Get out of the way, man. That band was back. Yeah. Nice. We could oh, feel that. God, I would have killed to see that. That band was popping. Yeah. You know, we had, you know, but it took him a while. There's no doubt about it. And, of and course. Uh, you know, he got a little of this thing going. He's got to watch it. So, mm -hmm. but when it was there, oh. 
Oh, it was great. Is it that great. is that filmed somewhere, Felix? Can people go? I find think it? I think uh, there's a DVD. I think Van Zandt. Ah uh, uh, man, I'd love to see that. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can get you all a, a copy of that. that would be I, I saw it. I watched it with the. Oh, I watched background. it too. Paul saw it with the. Curtain. Where? Where? I'll go see it. Street. We have it. I can get it Stream to you. It? I think I gave it to Paul next. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. That's the thing, you know, about a band, you know, that I, I'm sure you all understand, but a band is a band. And every member of that band has to be magically connected to each other. Yes. Absolutely. Be That's Doesn't mean you're the best singer over here, the best singer. No. But together, there's a gift there. The vibe is, a, is the bottom line, man. And yeah, when yeah. that comes out, you know, it's like, oh, so that's why these guys are so damn good. Oh, Absolutely. I well, that came out. That came out. And, oh, and I, I can't wait to like, see it because you're one of my favorite bands. Oh, it was fun. Can was I, really fun. So we were trying to think, well, Paul, we were, you know, talking before, and I couldn't remember if we had played the Cowsills had played with the ra Young Rascals, the Rascals, but I knew. I had maybe done it. We had done a TV show with y'all or something, but because <clears throat> I remember seeing Gene sitting in a folding chair somewhere in my yeah. little tiny girl head, and Bob cleared it up for me, Bob yeah. and Paul, because it was in Newport, y'all. Hey, Felix. So, where you live in Newport, Rhode Island, in 1966, our dad and a, and a uh, partner opened a teenage nightclub called Bambi's in Newport, Rhode Island. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah. at the time, they booked the Rascals, uh, I think, for $2,500 for a Sunday um, way far away, uh, far, so far away that you could say yes, even. OK, and you did. By the time you hit Newport, <laughs> moving on a Sunday afternoon was number one. They couldn't wow. fit everyone who wanted to get into Bambi yeah, since we owned the nightclub with our dad and you know, our family owned it. And we kids were helping that day. We're down there. You walked right by me and it, were, and it was my arms and Paul arms stretched left and right. We were the security line you walked through to get to the stage. There you go. Yeah. And we made it safe and sound. How about that? We did. That we did. That was fun. And I remember it because God, and there were just, yep. you guys were so beautiful. And I was just like, can I go too? And I was like, oh. Yeah, I was God. just, uh, those days were just fun for all of they us. They so I, I were. Dino walked by me. Dino walked by me in that line. And I, I just quick, he does look like Mike yeah. Smith. And then the next one walks by, <laughs> you walk by. And we're famous because we're making, keeping everyone away from you. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> those, were those were special days, you know, and, 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 and I, I think the business was kind of like, you know, in its infancy and, you know, everybody was really yeah. happy and uh, singing was, and shining and, and, you know, like it was a lot of fun, you know, and, 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 and of course I'm so was. happy that we, we could all, you know, share that. Felix, we wanted in on that fun. Now, just to give a ton context of the two guys in the line with you there at your concert, we had already been dropped from two record labels and had four flops out. MGM in 1967 we yet. 67's coming and we're watching you guys and we're those kids. We want that. We want that. We want that. Oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. great. That was so fun. Well, when, when did you all start playing together? How old were you all? Oh, we were very young. No. Uh, we started playing guitar, seven and eight year olds. We did the folk music thing as 13, 14, 15 year olds. You know, we're we're in the group of teenagers who's, whose jaws drop to the floor on the three Ed Sullivan Beatle uh, sure, sure. performances, which told us what to wear, what gear. Go ahead, Paul. We also we grew up in Newport, so we were accustomed to the Newport Folk Festival. Oh, totally. Yeah. And and so yeah. And so all the time when that festival was in, we would go around town. They'd have these huts. Oh, music, music, music. And when dad bought the, the nightclub, <laughs> it was like, man, we had, we had, um, everybody came to play Bambi's. It was. So you were encouraged basically to, to play and sing together? Or? Oh, sure. It's all we knew how to do. Good for you. You're lucky. And it came from within us. And it just took a matter of by the time we're in the Beatle era and we know what to play, the parents are taking note of the, I think the kids are good. And <laughs> good. we're going to, we're going to do something with it. And we did. And it was, it was fantastic. Just, yeah, it was just great. Our first encounter with the Rascals was when we started recording at A&R Studio and our engineer was Roy Sakawa. Oh, yes. Roy's wife wrote, I ain't going to eat out my heart anymore. And yeah. I think that's our connection and that's our song. And by the way, Felix, the Cowsills cover band that we were before we got signed with MGM, we performed I Ain't Gonna Eat Out My Heart there Anymore, go. Good Lovin', and yeah. How Can I Be Sure, and... Uh, 
there you go. It was we did four of your songs at our nightclub gigs. <laughs> so go your Polly. roots are in us. So. We've yeah. been together for a long time, you and yeah. I. Yeah. Oh, Fantastic. longer than you knew. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Felix, I, I just want to thank you for the music and the oh. love and the peace and the happiness yeah, that all, all that. Of that music put in us as junior high school kids and uh -huh. high school kids. And, and we just love you. Yeah, we really do. It makes me cry. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, this music, this is the soundtrack of our, our, uh, yes. you know, a lot of our years. I always felt that, uh, you know, that that's really the reason that we're here uh, to do what we're doing here. You know I mean? To make those connections. You got a gift, you gotta you gotta use it, you gotta share it, you know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's unfortunate that you know uh, the business kind of gets in the way of that joy. Oh, it yeah. does, does it? sure tries. Make, yeah. It, does. it sure tries, but we're not gonna let it, guys, and we're all still Never. here doing this thing. Not in this podcast, is no not man. All right, my people. Hey, I got a house to paint. Get the book. Yeah. What's the name of your book, Felix? <laughs> Rascald. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It is. What's the name of the book? Oh, um, the book, the book's name. Uh, geez. Well, uh, 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 it's just uh, basically a memoir of Felix Cavalier. We're looking for a title. You know, uh, the manager calls, it, calls me the king of blue-eyed soul. You know? Yeah, I like that. It's coming out, guys. There's still time to submit your questions that you want covered in Felix's book. Just get it. <laughs> get them to us. We'll get them to him. <laughs> You know, I was I was going to call it Forever Young Rascal, but uh, no, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's been great, and uh, keep on trucking. Well, we'll you see look good for show. 78. We'll do a show together again. We'll get back out there next year with everybody. So are you all out on the road with uh, with Happy Together or something like that? Are you guys doing that? We are. We'll be out again next summer. Yeah, we got our third leg of that tour, which was the August leg. We, we we lost June, we lost July, but we got August. And now next summer they've got it. But we're playing in Miami with the Guess Who uh, coming up here in a few days. We're at the cutting room, uh, first of the year. And the Golden Nuggets. So yeah. we're back and we're so happy to be back. Yeah. To play and sing. Well, if you get to Nashville, Tennessee, which is where I'm living, yes. please what? give me a call so I can come down and be in the first row. Oh, God. Uh, oh, my uh, God. I can't believe you just said thanks. that. I'll call you, okay? Oh, please. You have my numbers <laughs> at my email. I know. And... I promise not to overuse it. No, I'm just kidding, Felix. And if you get down to Nashville, please, you know, because... We will. I wish I was coming up. To, I was just in Rhode Island uh, 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 a week ago. Where was, where was it? Oh. Uh, I was right near the airport there. We were doing Providence. a show. Providence. Providence. Yeah, really? It was next to Providence. It wasn't... It was a little town started with W, like Warsaw or something like that. Warwick. Warwick. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. just did that about three weeks ago. Well, we're scattered all over the globe now, but we all get back oh, there all you the are. time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check out Felix's tour schedule. Yeah, check everything out. And he had five times as many hits as us. Five, ten times. Ten uh, times. FelixCavalryMusic.com has got all the dates. Please call me. Please. Okay, we will. Felix, if I'm any around, anywhere around your neighborhood, please. Okay. Love you all guys so much. Love you, Felix. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Yep. Take care. God Take bless care, you guys. Everybody. Bye, guys. Everybody. See you next week, boys. Yep.